Hello, welcome to electricalfareview.com. In today's video, we're going to talk about transient response in a circuit. Specifically, we're going to talk about an RL circuit, meaning the circuit is composed of a resistor and an inductor. So in this question, we're given a circuit, as you can see, and we're asked to find the transient response of IFL, the current flowing through the inductor. Notice that in the question, it states that the circuit below has been stable for a very long time. What does that mean? That means that since we have a switch right here, as you can see, the switch is marked by an arrow and means the arrow has been closed or the switch has been closed before t equals zero. At t equals zero, which it says right here, this switch is going to be opened and this part of the system, which is on the left side, will be completely disconnected from the right part of the system. So let's repeat that again. At t equals zero, the switch will be opened and at t less than zero, the switch has been closed for a very long time. That's what it means by it has been stable. Now, let's go ahead and talk about how we can go ahead and find a transient response. First of all, let's see what a transient response is. The transient response is the response of a circuit when a sudden change happens in the circuit. So when we move the switch up or we disconnect this part of the circuit from the rest of the circuit, that's when a sudden change happens. And that response is our transient response. So we need to find several things in order to be able to find this. So first of all, we need to find IFL when time is less than zero, meaning when the switch has been closed. Secondly, we need to find IFL at time equals infinity, meaning after the switch has been opened for a very long time. That's what infinity means. Next, we have to find our constant K1, which we'll explain later how to find exactly. And later we need to find also the value of tau, which is made up of the R equivalent and the inductor in this circuit. So first, let's go ahead and talk about what our circuit will be looking like at t less than zero. So at t less than zero, it states in the problem description that our system has been stable, meaning the inductors turn into short circuit. Notice that we had a capacitor right here it would turn into an open circuit. So at time less than zero, always our inductors are short circuited. So let's go ahead and replace this inductor with the short circuit. And this is how our circuit will look like. As you can see, the inductor is replaced with a wire, which is just a short circuit. Notice that this wire will simply bypass this 1K ohm resistor. Since the currents that are coming through here will all go through the easier way, which is just a wire, other than going through a 1K ohm resistor, as a result, this 1K ohm resistor will simply be bypassed and we can just replace it with a simple wire. So our circuit will look like this. There it is. There is our updated circuit. Now let's go ahead and find IFL. Notice that this is for when time is less than zero. So how can we find IFL? First of all, we know that this voltage source right here, the one volt is parallel with this 2K ohm resistor. And we know that two elements in parallel have the same voltage across them. So if this is a one volt voltage source, this 2K ohm resistor is going to be one volt across it too. So let's go ahead and mark this on the circuit, plus minus one volt. And we know that a current through an element is the voltage across it divided by the resistance across it. So if we name this as I2, I2 is going to be the voltage across the 2 kilo ohm resistor, which is 1 volt, divided by the resistance of that resistor, which is 2 kilo ohm. And as a result, I2 is simply going to be 1 half milliamps. Notice the units will be milliamps since we're dividing volts by kilo ohms. We just mentioned that the voltage across the 2 kilo ohm resistor is 1 volt, meaning at this node right here, we have 1 volt. So we can simply find the current going through this 1K ohm resistor by taking the voltage across the 1K ohm resistor, dividing by the resistance of the 1K ohm resistor. Let's mark this current as I1. So I1 is going to be the voltage across this 1K ohm resistor, which is 2 volts minus the 1 volt right here. Let's write that down. I1 is going to be 2 volts minus 1 volt, voltage across it, divided by the resistance, which is 1 kilo ohm. As a result, I1 is simply going to be 2 minus 1 is 1, 
so one volt divided by one kilo ohm and I1 is simply one milliamps now that we found the value of I2 and I1 which are both marked on the circuit we can simply find the value of IL by doing KCL at this node so KCL states that the currents coming inside this node will equal the currents leaving this node so the currents coming inside this node is going to be I1 and that's it and the currents leaving this node is IL plus I2 so we can write IL equals I1 minus I2 we just moved I2 to the other side and as a result IL is going to be I1 we stated as 1 milliamps and I2 was half of milliamps and IL therefore is going to be 1 over 2 or half of milliamp notice that this value the current through the inductor is 1 half milliamps when time is less than 0 this is very important so when the switch is still not opened the value of the current through the inductor is 1 half of milliamps now let's go ahead and see how our circuit will look at times equals infinity meaning the switch has been opened for a very long time so here we have our switch opened as you can see right here our switch is opened and we're talking about when time equals infinity so how are we going to find our I of L at time equals infinity first of all we know that at time equals infinity our inductors turn into short circuit once again so note that at time less than zero and at time equals infinity our inductors are short circuit that's when our system is stable so when our system is stable or circuit is stable in this case our inductors become short circuit and our capacitors become open circuit and right when the change happens which we want the transient response for then at that point our system is not stable and as a result our inductors will not be short circuited right when the change happens so if we replace this inductor with a short circuit we can also see that this 1k ohm resistor will be bypassed just like before since all the current will flow through the wire or the short circuit right here also since this switch is open now we're completely removing this part of the circuit from the entire circuit meaning we can replace our circuit only with what is left on the right hand side so our circuit will look like this there it is much simpler now and we know that a simple KVL in this loop can give us IL since this is 1 volt right here this 2 kilo ohm right here also has to be negative 1 volt meaning the sum of the voltages in a closed loop will equal to 0 so if the voltage across the 2k ohm resistor denoted by V 2k ohm is negative 1 volt remember that this is in order to satisfy KVL in this circuit and show that the sum of the voltages in the closed loop will equal to 0 so IL the current going through that resistor is simply going to be the voltage across it negative 1 volt divided by the resistance of that which is 2 kilo ohms so IL of T is going to be negative 1 over 2 milliamps and that is how you find IL of T and notice that this is for when time is infinity now that we found time at infinity and time less than zero let's see what else we need to find before we move on let's take a quick look at the original circuit notice that we found IL at time less than zero meaning zero minus right before zero and that was one half milliamps a very important thing is that the current through an inductor is not going to change instantly when you put the switch in place so IL at 0 minus meaning right before the switch is opened is going to be the same at IL at 0 plus when the switch is opened and that is going to have the same value that we found to be one half milliamps and 0 minus and 0 plus means the moment before 0 and the moment after 0 meaning the moment before and after we change the switch so since IL at 0 minus is the same as IL at 0 plus we can simply write IL at 0 is 1 half milliamps and notice that we found the 1 half milliamps in the previous step of this video 
Now, let's go ahead and see how we can find K1, which is our constant for the transient response. So the value of K1 is found using IFL at zero minus IFL at infinity. And that is the formula on how you find K1. Notice that if you wanted to find for an RC circuit, you would use VC, the voltage across the capacitor, instead of the current through the inductor. Previously, we found IL at zero to be one half milliamps and IL at infinity, at time equal to infinity, to be minus one half milliamp. Notice if we do this math, our value of K1 is simply becomes one milliamp. And that is the value of the constant that we need for our transient response equation. Next, we have to find a time constant or a tau. So tau or a time constant is how much it's gonna take for a capacitor or inductor, in this case inductor, to be fully charged. It will take five time constants for the inductor to be fully charged. So our tau in an RL circuit is found using the formula L divided by R, meaning you divide the value of the inductance or the inductance equivalent divided by R equivalent. Since we only have one inductor here, the value of L or inductor in this case is five Henry's. But we have multiple resistors, so how do we find R? We have to find the R equivalent or R thevenin. Notice that we always look at time equals infinity when we are going to find the tau. So in this circuit, as you can see, it's time equals infinity. The switch is opened. And this part of the circuit, once again, is going to be completely removed. And we only look at the right hand side. And in order to find R equivalent, we're going to look through the inductor and find the equivalent resistance through the inductor. Also, we know that in order to find the Thevenin resistance, our voltage sources become short circuit and current sources become open circuit. Let's write that down. So for Thevenin, we see that our voltage sources, they turn into short circuit and our current sources, they turn into open circuit. Notice that this is only when there's no dependent voltage sources or current sources in the circuit in which our circuit satisfies that condition. So let's go ahead and replace this voltage source by a short circuit and look through the inductor terminals in order to find the R thevenin or R equivalent. So here is what our circuit looks like and we need to find through these two terminals. I'll label them A and B. So we look through A to B and find R equivalent. Notice that you might think that 1K ohm and 2K ohm are in series, but that's not quite right. Look, if you send a current right here from the inductor to this point, what happens to the current? The current splits. Some goes in the 1K ohm resistor and some goes in the 2K ohm resistor, meaning that the 1K ohm and 2K ohm resistor are in parallel for sure. Also, we see that they both share the same node on one side and share the other node at the other side meaning these two resistors are for sure in parallel. So R Thevenin can be replaced by making 1K ohm in parallel with a 2K ohm. And the result of them is going to be the multiplication of them divided by the addition of them divided by 1K ohm plus 2K ohm. R Thevenin as a result is going to be 2 over 3 kilo ohms. Notice that I'm keeping everything in the fraction form as it is easier to do the final calculations in fractions. So here we have our original circuit since we're almost done with this problem so we can find the time constant as I mentioned it's L over R and time constant is going to be L which was 5 Henry's divided by R equivalent which we found to be 2 over 3 kilo ohms and our tau is going to be 15 over 2 milliseconds. Notice that the unit is going to be milliseconds since you're dividing Henry's by kilo ohms not ohms. So if you want that in seconds our tau is simply going to be 15 divided by 2000 seconds. Now let's go ahead and write the final value for a transient response. The final value for transient response 
which I denote by IL of N, meaning transient or natural, which is the same thing. Natural response is the same as transient response. And that's with terms of T. It's going to be K1 times E to the minus T over tau. So we found K1 to be, as I mentioned again, the formula for K1 is IL at zero minus IL at infinity. And previously, we found K1 to be one. And we also found tau to be 15 over 2,000 seconds. So our transient response, IL of N, or natural response, is going to be just one times that, which is just a constant. We can just keep it as nothing there, minus T over tau. So we can just do, so since this is minus T over tau, we can flip tau. So it's going to be minus 2,000 T divided by 15. And that unit is milliamps, since we all, our calculation was done in milliamps. And this is the formula for the transient or natural response of a current through an inductor in an RL circuit. Let's do a recap quickly. So before time is zero, our switch is closed and our system is stable, meaning the inductor is going to be short circuited. Once we flip the switch, the current through the inductor does not change instantly, meaning IL at zero minus is the same as IL at zero plus. Also note that after the switch has been opened, our inductor turns into a current source. This is a very important note. Our inductor turns into a current source. However, we don't need necessarily need this information to solve such problems. If you had a capacitor, the capacitor would turn into a voltage source. Another important information is that at time equals infinity, meaning when the switch has been opened for a very long time, our inductor turns back into a short circuit and we can calculate the circuit as follows. And this is how you find the transient response in an RL circuit.